we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of the servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. Let us pray. Lord, it has pleased you that we, your children, should be gathered here today to encounter your marvelous power. We ask that you strengthen as many that are weak. Give hope to the hopeless. Build up the brokenhearted. Those they have sent us to everlasting failure. Lord, cause your will to bring about a divine resurrection of destinies in the name of Jesus. Amen. May your word come out with power. Amen. For the deliverance of your children. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Be seated. Today's topic is press on. Victory is true. Okay, Victory is true. What is true is something that is 100%. Something that is beyond any form of human doubt. Something that is not subjected to any form of probability. And this victory is true because it is coming from God and from God alone. It does not depend on any human being except the person concerned. Second Corinthians chapter 4, 8 and 9. Second Corinthians 4, 8 and 9. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Praise the Lord. I don't know if there is anybody here who wants to turn to the left. Left is empty. Turn to the right. Right is empty. You look down. You look front and back. And you didn't see anybody to help you but you alone. Sometimes we have some terrible dreams and when we wake up, we say, oh God, thank you. It was just a dream. Uh, this is not a reality. There are other times we could ask ourselves because of the situations we find ourselves. Am I dreaming? And you try to wake yourself up. You just try, let me wake myself up. It's like I'm dreaming. I can't believe my eyes. And you discover that there is no chance of waking up because you have already woken up. It's reality. The thing is not happening in the dream. It is real life. And at that moment, you just need to put all your trust and all your hope in God and continue to press on in life. I have a few principles. I say nothing is too big, nothing is too small. For you as a soldier of Jesus Christ, at every point in time, even yesterday or two days ago, I told someone, I said there are two things you need to look out for. Look out for the worst and the best. Set your mind, get ready that the best can happen. Which is what we are hoping on, focusing 100% of our attention on, that the best will definitely come. But peradventure the worst comes. We should still be ready to welcome it and face it. Praise the Lord. There are two major events in the life of every human being. And these two events, one happens when we are unconscious. We don't think, we don't make decisions before it happens. And that is birth. The second one happens, sometimes we may have opportunity to make some decisions. Sometimes we may not even have opportunities. And that is death. 
One, people rejoice. The other one, people do what? They cry. These are the two main events in life. One is the beginning of life. One is the end of life in this world. But in between these, there are so many struggles, so many stress, so many times uh, situations may want to compel you to give up and surrender. When you see armies, there is something they wear that is called camouflage. Do we know what camouflage means? Uh, some, uh, they are of different colors. Depending on where they are going to. If they are going to a mountainous region, where everywhere is dry, uh, the place uh, looks, uh, uh, it's not greenish, a dry place, they will wear something that resembles the environment. Why? They need to adapt to enable them to survive well, so that if you are far away, you will not see them. You may even be very close to them, but because they have used, uh, they are putting on camelonic uh, disguise, you will think that a human being is not there. But when they go to the forest, where everywhere is greenish, they wear the color of the forest. Why? They want to identify with their environment so that they can succeed in life. Somebody following me. We are talking about press on. Victory is sure. The first thing we must do in life, I'm just trying to rush this message and cut it somehow so that I don't take much of our time. The first thing we must do in life, we must recognize God as our head. We must see God as the controller, as the designer first of our destiny. And as the one that can change things for us, if we must see the victory that is sure. The Bible says that the earth is a lot and the fullness thereof. He is in charge of all the world. The throne of God is in heaven and the whole of this earth is his footstool. The earth itself is not far from God. God is here. He's omnipresent. The presence of God is here. So we must see him as someone that is in charge of all situations. Someone that is in charge of our lives. Even in charge of every bit of splits of seconds of our lives. And when we see him as the one that has good plans for us. Plans of good and not the plans of evil. Then put our trust in him. Victory will definitely be sure. Then secondly, we must identify with our situations. Identify with our situations. When we are coming into this world, we have no power of choice to choose our parents and choose where we are to be born. We had no choice over the time of our birth. We were not consulted. God made all things beautiful. In his own time, not our own time. Some of us grew up to discover that our parents are not very much well to do. Some of us grew up to discover that the place we are actually born, that place, anywhere you are seen outside this country, the nickname they call you is foreigner, is criminal. Some of us grew up to discover that our parents don't actually have the money it takes to push us to the height that we are aspiring to go. I know a man, Reverend Dr. Charles Apoki, his messages, his life alone is an inspiration. Do you know him? In Ugele, this man sold firewood and he said his father was a gate man. I don't want to call the hotel name where the man was. A gate man. But he said one day he was in, a, in an occasion where there are top, top people in the society. And he was there and he was sitting with the son of the man his father was serving as a gate man. They were at the same level. And that is life. 
This man chose not to give up. I sat with him. I had to go and see him one day. Sat with him for some, for some minutes and my brain resets. It entered factory mode and resets. His life is an inspiration. He was not angry that why am I born by poor parents? Today, the man is making money with his own hands, not by wire. He was even saying, we invited him here one day. He said, as you see him as a doctor, he will back a baby in his school and be singing and playing. He has a school, uh, Petra Academy, Nugale. He will back a baby and be playing with the baby. He said, it is money. If you treat people like trash, you will not get their cash. I heard it from him. Praise the Lord. He was not ashamed because he knows that all things work together for the good of those who love God. Even to them that believed in the name of the Lord and accept their situations that I know God is going somewhere. I don't need to give up. I don't need to live my life anyhow. The fact that I am born by poor parents. Today, one bad news that some of us have failed to accept is that Nigeria is a capital city of poverty all over the world. Some of us have not come to realize this truth and identify with it. But until a believer identifies with his situation, sees the truth, believes the truth, and decide to live above his situation, he will never make it in life. Victory will be very, very far away. Another thing we must do, after identifying, believing in God, trusting in God as a one in charge, as a suffering God, who is in charge of our lives, after identifying with our situations, we must press on. And that is where the struggle lies. We must press on. Every time we come here, we receive declarations, we receive prayers. How many of us run with the prayers we receive? How many of us press on with the declarations we receive? Prayers don't produce food. P declarations don't bring food. What brings food? Prayers Declarations, words of prophecy, they open the way. They put things in place so that when you get there, God is already there with his provision waiting for you. Abraham said, the son said, Daddy, we are going. Uh, where shall we get the lamb for the sacrifice? The father said, the Lord shall do what? Shall provide. Did he remain there? He kept moving. Faith without work is what? Is dead. Many of us who are African Christians, uh, what we, many of us practice is not actually pure Christianity. Pure Christianity is you starving yourself for a while. You will have some yams, seed yams at home. You have some seeds at home. But you starve yourself because you are waiting for planting season. And then when everybody is eating, you are planting and asking God to bless the seeds. You don't just plant and go home. You pray and you don't just pray alone. You weed the farm. I told one small girl recently, she's 18 plus. I told her if you don't make a change, Apart from this, your body now that you can sell for some cobble. You don't have any other thing to show in life. Nothing to show. School, you didn't finish primary school. You have not learned any trades. You don't have any handwork. And you know the law of diminishing return. Eh? Not the law of diminishing return. A time we come, the body will depreciate. Market no go move again. That is the truth. That time there will be problem, and somebody will become a witch, 
and somebody will become a wizard. I told my brothers, the day any of you calls my mother a witch, you will see yourself in the police station. Fight for your life. Don't spoil your life and tag somebody a witch. In London, there are more people who practice witchcraft openly in London and than in Nigeria and in Africa as a whole. People practice witchcraft. Even early 19th century, I read a documentary, uh, a confession of an Illuminati who was a witchcraft priest. He said when they beat skyscrapers, they put brooms there so that when witches are passing, they will perch on the broom and bless their house. So they even make preparations and welcome witches. No be here is that. Um, uh, Evangelist of Anna was listening to the music. He said Jesus came to this world where there are lions and tigers. And he finished what he was doing and went home peacefully. He finished it. He got the victory and went back to the father. And before he went, he said, it is finished. And when he said that, I said, me, I will one day say, it is finished. In the presence of the witches and the wizards, in the presence of the Boko Haram, in the presence of powers of darkness, in the presence of the powers in high places and low places, if you are determined, you will succeed. It is about you. Listen. Life is a struggle. Life. Medical people say when a baby is born, and when the baby takes in air, oxygen for the first time, the baby receives shock and cry out. Me, I say no. I believe half of that story. Who can be in the womb for nine months? You don't feed. You don't breathe for yourself. Everything is cheap. Provided, in fact, if your mommy is lying, somehow you don't like, you make noise, your mommy will shift. And relax. Well, if you if you don't like the position, you kick, 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 and your mommy will position where everything is prepared for you. Now they push you into a world, and you inhale the hot air with dust. The baby screams out. So now I need to feed for myself. I need to breathe on my own in this wicked world. Hey, the baby will raise alarm. Sheep, fight, fight! Don't blame people. Hey, is this my uncle? They're not a help person. Uh, this is my family. I have rich people, and that is your bad news. You are preaching everywhere. Let me tell you: don't make friends, make money. Um. Is it not January when I saw that lady that came here? And I said, This is a celebrity. This is a role model. A married lady with children would take tricycle and go and look for money on the roads. She's a role model. Fight for your future, fight for your destiny. Don't sleep and wake up and snore. Hey, is, is it only you that will be greeting all the neighbors? Neighbors should wake up and meet your emptiness. Stop. Hey, hey, somebody is not greeting you. You forgive them. After greeting them and greeting them and asking them what you have done, after trying all your best, leave them alone. Go and fight for money. If a rich man beats his house at the outskirts of the town, his house will rush. More than a poor man in the city. Don't pray alone. As you pray, buy Madiga, go and hawk. Yes. And don't confuse people when you are hawking. Because sometimes when I see some people hawking, I will ask, uh, is it the lady that is on the train? 
Or is the train that is on her on top of the head of the lady? Do you understand what I'm saying? Because some people say, is this granite I'm hawking? This granite. The granite alone cannot buy your iPhone. And even if you want to buy something that you sweat for, you will buy something that is moderate and save more for the future. I have a few minutes left. Listen. Life is not cheap. Let me just give you uh, two or three examples of those who press on in life. Do you know Cain that killed Abel? Eh? God cursed this man. God released curses upon him. And he cried and he said, God, this punishment is too much for only me. God said, a vagabond you will be. Will you be in this world? A vagabond. You will move here and there. This man entreated God. I don't know if God actually reduced his punishment. But there is something that touched my heart. In a, This man moved. After leaving the presence of God. He went to his father and took a wife. Part of, I believe, is part of telling God, God, I don't want to be a vagabond. He built a city. He said, instead of room, and he did not call the name of the city by his own name. He called the name of the city by the name of the son. God, you said I should be a vagabond. No city should bear my name. Please. He called the city's name. He used the name of the son to call the city. Faith. He didn't give up. He continued to obey God. God have mercy. I can't be a vagabond. Lord, please have mercy. Even Ahab, the most wicked king. Or you could say the wickedest king. Don't write that in school of his failure. The wickedest king so far in Israel bet God and God showed mercy. And postponed the punishment. He didn't give up. What about Esau? The story of Esau, eh? This is somebody that sold his birthright. And then it came to the time to, of receiving the blessings. Esau eh, went to... As a matter of fact, when you know that your father likes that meat, you should be leaving some at home. Esau did not leave any of those meat at home. So when the father needed that kind of meat, he had to go and hunt. Just the way some of us, if we see pot of soup, we finish it today. We say, God shall provide. If I somebody, I used to give money. When I saw the food he bought, I told myself, it is over. <laughs> Me, I don't eat this kind of food. You are laughing. Don't eat that kind of food. If I own 1,000, I want to buy food. I say, if I add more money now, I will buy good meat at home and cook good food. He lost it. But look at what happened. When Jacob was coming back with his family, he sent some gifts to Esau. And what happened? Esau said in Genesis chapter 33 verse 9, because he refused to give up, I have enough, my brother. Keep that thou hast unto thyself. But do you know what happened? In chapter 27 verse 40, the father told him, And by thy sword shalt thou live, and shalt save thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shall have dominion. When you shall have dominion. That means as at that point, there was no dominion. But if you do not give up and decide to look for dominion, you will remove that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. When you have dominion, you will break the yoke of poverty, of limitation. And when this man Jacob came back, he said, keep your gifts. I have enough. 
He came with 400 men. 400 men that we are living with him. He came with 400, which means he broke the yoke. Tap your neighbor, say neighbor. That yoke of poverty, you will break it if you fail to give up. Be on your feet, we have to pray. Listen, if I fail to tell you this, I will not be happy. Before I started secondary school, eh? before I started GSS 1, I had my own farm. I went to a virgin forest, cleared it, planted plantain eh? in my own farm. I became a farmer throughout my senior secondary school. I was feeding on my own food. I can fry gari. So when I took phone and said, let's take selfie. That lady is my sister. We have the same blood, even though we are not from the same tribe. Also, 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 if not, poverty will kiss you. If you fail to walk, poverty. <laughs> Lift up your two hands. We will not give up. If you are here and you want to give up, don't give up. God does not give up. He says, press on. David, encourage himself in the Lord. Don't give up. Life is in stages and in phases. This will change. Father, Lord, threaten us, your children. As many that are expecting failure, that one day we will fail. Lord, the same people, one morning will wake up by the sound of our rejoicing that finally God has done it. So shall it be in the name of Jesus. Father, as many who do not know you, but are struggling on their own to overcome, appear to them. And I decree, joining my faith with the faith of our fathers in this house, may everything around you, may the poverty around you, may the fight and the oppression around you, may everything work out for your good in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we pray. <laughs> We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.hosannadavid.com Email us at info at hosannadavid.com God bless you.